Yesterday, we marked Emancipation Day, and in just a few days, we will again celebrate our independence. These major milestones in our history and development as Jamaicans teach us lessons about the value of perseverance, tenacity, and a commitment to being and doing good. Those who came before us fought hard for sovereignty over our own lives and national affairs. Let's not squander it. Let's protect our freedoms, but never forget our responsibility to each other, and that includes following the COVID-19 safety guidelines. I'm Adrian Atkinson, and you're watching Jamaica Magazine. There is more on the other side of this break. Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, celebrating over 20 years of investment in community development. JSIF has forged relationships with international funding partners, as well as private and public sector entities. Let us continue to invest to reduce vulnerabilities. Let us build our social capital and resilient infrastructures to ensure full participation in Vision 2030. JSIF, investing for community development. The Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, is a government agency that's mandated to boost micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in the country. As Jamaica continues its phased reopening of the economy since COVID-19 disrupted industry and commerce, the JBDC is helping MSMEs re-establish and maintain firm footing. Get the facts right now. <music> Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm your host, Enthros Campbell. The global pandemic has undoubtedly caused major disruptions for businesses, and we've seen how some industries have had to shift, develop, and adjust to new practices. But what kind of impact has a pandemic had on businesses in Jamaica? And what must they do in order to thrive post-COVID-19? Well, today we are joined by someone who can help us with those questions and much more. He's Mr. Harold Davis, Deputy Chief Executive Officer at the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, the JBDC. Mr. Davis, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So good to have you. Let us start at the top. Tell us a little about the functions of the JBDC. The JBDC is a, a government-owned limited liability corporation whose main function is to work with the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in Jamaica. And work with them meaning that we offer a suite of technical services, um, business development services, that moves a client from what we say concept um, all the way up to the market and all the in-betweens. So persons who can who have an, an idea to start a business come to us, persons who are aspiring to grow their business to another level, persons who are aspiring to go into new markets and so on, or just to tweak their business model, um, they come to us and we work with them. Okay, good. So now let us talk specifically about the services you offer. I know you, do, you give technical support, you yes. draft business plan. Tell us a little bit more about that. So we have a suite of services that we offer. Um, like I said before, from concept to market. Right. So we help you with your strategy, um, your business strategy. We help you to access relevant financial products and we help you to prepare for that. And we help you in your financial engineering and financial re-engineering as wow. it may be. Right. Um, we also help you with your product development and process development yeah, because yeah. we have a suite. We have um, engineers and industry specialists on staff as yeah, well. Yeah. And we help you with your marketing strategy. We yeah. have market experts on staff as well. So it's strategy, uh, access to finance and financial preparation, uh, what we call productivity enhancement, which includes your product development and your process development. And of course, market access um, preparation as well. And also, and also uh, underpinning all of that all is, is research. Um, we do assist you in research as well, because research provides this, the fundamentals um, for your business strategy. Excellent. But they must come with some things, right? You help them, you help them with the business plan and so on, but they must... Yeah. Yes, tell us about what they need to come with. 
Well, you need to come with a solid business concept. Eh? Um, concept you need to yeah. come through. And even if it's not quite solid, if you even come with a business idea, um, we will help you to structure that business idea and give you very, very poignant kind of ideas and, and recommendations as to work that you perhaps need to do on that business idea to make it a viable um, business proposition. Or if you are in business, you need to come with us with your business yeah. and whatever stage of business you are in, even if you, so the first group is those who are at a concept stage, second group is those who are in business um, and very clear about what it is that you want to go, uh, where it is that you want to go with your business, yeah. what it yeah. is that you want to do. And our, advisors are equipped and trained to help you and to help you think through that process yeah, yeah. and structure solutions accordingly yeah. to have you move from your point A yeah. to your point right. B. Your so point if we're not B too clear, if we're not too clear, we can find you anyway, right? And you'll straighten us out, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, yes, but yes. Not, I want to emphasize though, Enthrones, that come to us wherever you are. Um, because we have a very robust assessment system uh, when you get to us that yes. assesses where you are right. and your specific needs right. and we customize, we, we customize a package right. of solutions from within our skill set in-house and of course our partners outside of, 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 of the walls of JBDC mm -hmm. as well, who are part of our family as an appropriate solution for you. What has it been like since COVID though, COVID-19? Talk to us about some of the impacts and what, what are you seeing with businesses in Jamaica? Well, COVID is um, a pandemic that we had never seen before. We have never seen before. And we, 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 we say that it's difficult to build a business model with expecting a COVID. Understand what I'm saying is that, yes, you have to build your business model um, agile enough and, and, and understanding the risk uh, profile of the environment and so on. But a pandemic of the magnitude of a COVID is difficult to plan for, plan a business strategy for it. Because in COVID, what we found was that all of our supply chains were shutting down internationally. All our markets were significantly disrupted. And perhaps most importantly, or consumers, the persons who purchase our products, goods and products, went into crisis mode. So therefore they only began to purchase essentials, the essential, essential thing. Many persons lost their jobs, as you know. So the consumers themselves, their buying power was significantly decreased. Yeah. But as a result of that, of this crisis, we, uh, we did a survey early April um, to find out the effects of COVID on our clients. And, uh, up to 25% of them had to close their doors right. um, because of the impact of COVID. Another 12 or 13% of them had to reduce staff, um, working on a skeleton kind of staffing. You know, so the impact, let's be clear, um, on, the, on the outset was, was bad. But I want to say as well that it wasn't bad for everybody because like I mentioned before, our consumers went into crisis mode. So they went into essential purchases mode. So if you're in the business of providing essential service or essential goods, food, um, supermar small supermarkets, supermarkets, pharmacies, and things of that nature, you saw an uptick in, right. in, in your business practices and um, business results in the main. If you were in the business of a tech industry and providing your services online from before, and providing tech-driven services, yes. you also saw an optic right. in your business. You right. know what I mean? So we would so have learned quite a bit from this um, pandemic. So what, what are you taking from that as you go into your business processes? Absolutely. No, no, no. I, exactly. I want to say you to say work here now. <laughs> <laughs> because that's an excellent point. The main lesson is, is, is the structure of your business and, make, and making the structure of your business robust enough um, and, and by making the structure of your business robust enough we're talking about making sure that you have multiple income generating um, products and income generating lines um, you have the, the capacity and you have moved your business to be able to trade and to do engagement online because that is the way um, um, persons have been interacting and have been trading 
Um, those are two key, key lessons. The structure of your business to make it robust enough um, so that you can pivot um, and, 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 and also to move your businesses and services, your trading and also your business interactions with your customers and also your other businesses, B2B, online okay. in a structured um, kind of way is okay. it work, it's two of the it's interesting takeaways. And also the fact that you're the thing now, you have to make sure that you, the core of why it is that you became an entrepreneur, which yes. is your innovative spirit. Exactly. And look for yes. opportunities and yes. so on is fundamental and core to what it yes. is that you do. We're going to talk about that online business when we come back, but we take a break right. now. We'll come back with more information on surviving post-COVID. Join us when we come back. Finger licking jerk chicken, health fish and bami, we run down yam and banana, roast bread fruit, sweet potato pudding. Mm, mm, Jamaica food sweet. So let's make a pledge to use more local produce and less foreign goods. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We're focusing on the micro, small, and medium sized businesses with Harold Davis, who is Deputy Chief Executive Officer at the Jamaica Business Development Corporation. All right, so you were, we were talking about online businesses. Now, lots of persons might want to take their business online now because of what they saw in COVID. Tell us what should we consider when we're about to do that? Or should we not do? Excellent, excellent. Um, yes, the knee-jerk reaction for, for many businesses is to go online. Uh, and, and the truth is that the whole business of digital transformation of, of, of the of economies and certainly small businesses is a hot topic and it has um, been a hot topic internationally for a while. Many businesses have transformed their trade, have moved their trade and business to business online. But I want to make sure that persons understand that moving a business online, online is a tool. So the core thing that you need to understand is that it has to be in line with your business strategy. Yeah. And your overarching business strategy will determine uh, the value proposition that you bring to your clients. So if most of your clients are online or offline, it, does, it perhaps doesn't make sense for you presently to be offering services online if you're, most of your clients are in fact offline. The fact is that when you look at your online strategy, like I said, it has to be aligned with your business strategy. It is not a technology-driven um, approach that we need to take. It has to be a business strategy approach that we take with. That said, um, there are many uh, facilities, many tools that allows you to, to, to go online quickly, um, develop a website quickly um, um, to be able to trade online quickly, but if it's not aligned with your business strategy, you'll find that there's going to be some dissonance there. Yeah. yeah. So that's very important for yeah. us to understand. Right. But when you go online, you become exposed immediately to the entire world. Right. Yeah? So if you're not ready for that kind of business and that yeah. kind of trade, um, it, it, it may not be in, in you know, in, in, in alignment with your with your business strategy. Right. Are you seeing any kind of trends now post COVID? Are people doing differently with their business? What have you had to be you have to be doing different? What are you doing to help the, the business persons now? Yes, yes. We we had to pivot. Um and the, the good thing about JBDC is that our structure is, is fairly robust. As I mentioned before, you have to have the make sure you we have moved a lot of our services online. Um, yes. We have been able to move our support services to our clients and be able to operate remotely. And that took some doing. Um, but in the meantime, one of the things that came out of our initial survey was the need for upgrade and general you know, training and so on and sensitization um, um, for persons, uh, for, for, for businesses. And in the period of four, three and a half months, we have done some almost 40 different um, webinars online. Yeah, um, we have had a, a series called uh, Virtual 
the JBDC Virtual Biz Zone that happens every Tuesday. We have an in-concert series for our creative industry entrepreneurs that happens every Thursday. Plus, we have um, a program with what we call the Entrepreneur's Journey every Friday. So we have had to move a lot of what we would do offline, online. Right, for, um, based on the protocols, yes? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. And that trend well found, um, those who have done well as entrepreneurs have done a lot of that. They have, first of all, pivoted, looked at the environment and realized the changes in the needs of, the, of, of, of their public that they are serving um, and pivoted their products and services accordingly. Right. Pivoted the way in which the services get to the, the clients. Right. So are you reaching enough persons with that online platform? Or all the people you uh, need to reach. I think we can always reach more, yes. <laughs> to be honest. Yes. Uh, but but we have reached um, quite significant. We need to tally those numbers over the period because that would have been a, a huge number. But on an average, uh, about eight to a hundred persons attend our our sessions. Oh, excellent! Uh, oh, excellent! Talk to me about the workshop that you just completed. How how we, how did it go, and and what do you expect to 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 reap from that? You know, we have had we have embarked on an exciting journey and a journey into the social sector, the social enterprises um, sector, and it's a it's a sector that is so close to the hearts of us Jamaicans because we I think immediately just want to do good, and social enterprises do good because they have done well. Right. So we have had a really exciting roundtable discussion, opening up the discussion, talking about the ecosystem that needed that is needed to support the social enterprises sector that has gone that had gone extremely well. Um, the, from the days from Wednesday to Friday, uh, we hosted a proposal writing workshop focused again on social enterprises to help them to write winning grant proposal um, for, 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 for financing. So again, it's very exciting. Um, the, the, the participants were just extremely excited for the knowledge and, and so on. I mean, good, good. All right, pleasure. so you just had Christmas in July launched um, um, virtually. Tell me, what, yes. how is that going and how do we get the products? No. You know, the, in, you know, the launch of Christmas in July, um, this this last version of Christmas in July shows us that things are going in a Jamaica. Things are in going spite true, of, yes. It, well, yeah, I mean, because I mean, maybe you and I might be not of the might not be of a generation that's the boy twenty twenty now nah, keep, but twenty twenty a keep. <laughs> Still <laughs> um, a keep. Yes, we yes. have a seventeen, almost a twenty percent increase in participants exhibiting. Uh, at Christmas in July. Good, good. What is significant is 60% of those were new entrants yeah. and relatively young persons as well. We didn't get to see the launch. How can we know what products are and where to get them? Very shortly, um, in discussions and collaboration with the Linkage Council and the Ministry of Tourism, we are going to be having um, those products online um, at our Things to Make an um, e-commerce yeah, website. Yeah. There are other participants that that they, that that will carry the products as well. Um, but certainly they can tell you that very yes. shortly online, yes. you'll be able to purchase right. those products. We're happy for what you're doing at JBDC, Mr. Davis. Yes. And tell us what's next. Oh boy, I, we don't have time to talk about all of the things. That, oh, just <laughs> that one I thing. <laughs> recently we launched a craft policy. That's, an, that's another level of excitement. We're doing some exciting work in the creative industries as well, another key to Jamaica's um, um, economic progress as, as well. We're doing a lot of exciting things. I, I think the future is exciting and bright for entrepreneurship in, in, in Jamaica. Um, I believe that now is the time for entrepreneurs to go back to the core of why they became entrepreneurs, this whole innovation spirit and the spirit of doing taking a chance and doing something in a structured way to move themselves and the country forward. There are several opportunities that are going to come on the table because of this COVID-19. Yes. We just have to be very vigilant and aware of, of it and, and, and go for it. it excellent, will excellent. Thank you so very much for coming and talking to us today on Get the Thank Facts. Thank you so much. Good, Thank good. you. This has been Get the Facts. Our guest was Harold Davis, Deputy Chief Executive Officer at the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, the JBDC. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has forced businesses to innovate and reevaluate the way they function.
The difference between those that will boom and those that will not depends on how well they continue to pursue the opportunities identified during the crisis. Remember, JBDC's goal is to help businesses survive and prosper by providing them with business advice, consultancy, and training of the highest professional standard on both generalist and specialist business subjects. Just call them. Until next time, when Get the Facts brings you, as always, more important information, I'm Enthros Campbell. Thanks for watching and take good care. If it did nothing else, the COVID-19 pandemic affirmed the need for national food security and dynamic industries of economy that can withstand any shock. When the health crisis threatened to uproot agri-supplies on the island, government responded, as it did for those in commerce. Up next, we review what has so far been achieved in fiscal year 2020-2021 and what is still to be rolled out. As the government works to emerge from the COVID-19 experience, the main focus of this ministry is stimulating growth within the agricultural sector. Through the Ministry of Finance, $1 billion was allotted to provide support for farmers and fisher folk in order to stimulate recovery and growth for the sector. This $1 billion allocation, Mr. Speaker, will support the provision of equipment and machinery, infrastructures, assistance to the livestock subsector, assistance to the fisheries industry. We have support for climate smart production and practices and technologies, incentives for production to include purchase of excess produce from farmers. Infrastructure works have commenced on systems with the capacity to supply water to the farm gate in the southern region of the island. This is being done through the irrigation development projects. At the end of these projects, it is expected that approximately 7,000 hectares of arable land will be serviced with new irrigation and will be under sustainable production. The Ministry has initiated the development of arable lands in St. Catherine and Clarendon under the proposed Southern Plains Agricultural Development, SPAD, SPAD project. Three parcels totaling 795 hectares have been selected for this project and the project is to be funded through a grant of approximately 17.5 million British pounds from the United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Fund administered by the Caribbean Development Bank. Groundbreaking for the Southern Plains project is scheduled for mid-July. Under the 194 million drought adaptation and mitigation program for 2021 being implemented by RADA, MICAF will be supporting interventions to farmers and farmers groups who are experiencing threats or damage to crops as a result of drought conditions through the trucking of approximately 11.7 .7 million gallons of irrigation water over a three-month period. Purchase and distribution of 2,000 quarter-acre drip irrigation kits for small farmers. The purchase and distribution of water tanks. As we observe the International Year of Plant Health in 2020, $36 million has been allocated to the prevention and management of the tropical race for disease as we seek to protect and expand our banana industry. $105 million has been allocated to continue management activities for the frosty pod rot disease affecting cocoa as we seek to divest the sector. The former fisheries division is now being transitioned into the modernized National Fisheries Authority. The governor's mechanisms for the authority are now in place, with the establishment of a board of management at a national advisory council, as well as the formalization of an appeals tribunal. This authority also is implementing a national online licensing and registration system, 
aimed at making interactions with all fishers, fish farmers, and other stakeholders more efficient. In accordance with climate resilient actions, the National Fisheries Authority is now implementing the Promoting Community-Based Climate Resilience in the Fisheries Sector Project, valued at some 4.8 million United States dollars. This is a five-year project and is expected to end in March of 2023. The plan of action as recommended by the industry stakeholders includes greater digitization of the sector, improved sec systems for productivity and innovation, logistics and supply chains. The Ministry has therefore completed a manufacturing growth strategy and the goal of this strategy is to achieve $81 billion per annum in manufacturing output by 2025, which translates to an approximate annual average growth rate of 3% over the five-year period. Under the U.S. $4.4 million Government of Jamaica Agricultural Competitiveness Program Bridging Project, we have started the first phase of establishment of a 1,200-acre mango orchard on the plains of Clarendon for export. This is part of the process for the encouragement of major investments in the development of orchards such as avocado, ackee, coconuts, as well as june plum, sourcep, pomegranate, and, pa and pineapples as raw material for processing. As I said to you earlier, raw material for processing into purees and concentrates to replace the export. The ministry is also targeting for approval this year the national investment policy. This aims to provide the framework to align the efforts of all the entities involved in the attraction and facilitation of investments from both local and international sources. And our target will be this to gain cabinet approval of the, of the national investment policy Service. as a the green paper. According to Minister Shaw, the ministry has advanced discussions with two internet service providers to secure zero-rated access to both the Jamaica Trade Information Portal and the Jamaica Single Window for trade websites, along with other trade-related government sites. This means that users will not require data to access these sites. This fiscal year, the Exim Bank, with support of the Ministry of Finance, hopes to significantly increase its support to this important sector by disbursing at least $8.1 billion in loans. This is particularly in the context of the challenges being faced by the MSMEs because of the COVID-19 pandemic. High on the consumer protection agenda for this fiscal year is the development and promulgation of the National Consumer Affairs Policy. The objectives are maximize consumer welfare through empowerment and protection delivered by a coordinated national consumer affairs strategy and strengthen consumer affairs at the member state level in readiness for alignment to the regional consumer strategy and to enable Jamaica's compliance with international consumer protection policy. These are just some of the plans being put in place by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries to help enhance the sectors. This is where the show wraps, but another is in production as we speak. It comes your way tomorrow on the same station. And of course, much more can be found on our website and the JIS YouTube channel. Check them out and spare some time to connect with us on all the social media platforms. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson saying thanks for your company and thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service the voice of Jamaica.